Louder with Crowder is brought to you in part by... Crowder Head over to the shop, support the fight, and buy some cool threads. It's the Tits Pajamas. Crowder Tasty. That's called a panic sip. Uh-oh. What? Why yeah, because right before I just went on air, people, I was blowing my nose. <laughs> yeah. <they're good. laughs> and then coughing up. I have a, just so you know, just really quickly so before gross. I go to the, <laughs> a, yeah. I have a sinus. I don't know how my parents got COVID. They're both totally fine. Right. Yeah. But I repeat myself. <laughs> They're both totally fine. Uh-huh. Then yeah. I felt like I had symptoms uh, and I thought I had the, 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 the Rona. Right. And right. I test, home test, negative. My wife the next day had much milder symptoms, positive. Hmm. Then I tested negative going into a cl- two times in three days. I do not have it. I finally spoke with my doctor. They're like, oh, yeah, you must have had it already. What? And I said, well, how what? does that happen? They're like, well, you, you must have had I said, but I didn't test a negative for anybody. She said, those tests aren't reliable. Oh, good. Well, I said, what? Then- <laughs> Which test is reliable? And then I started looking at Apparently, my blood type is B negative. And that's incredibly rare. Like 1% oh, of the population. Now everybody knows. I think it's three. My wife <laughs> said three. out, guys. <laughs> yeah. Is it's it? so low. It's the lowest one, though. It's the second lowest. No, O is, o is above that. O is at six. No, o is, o is actually not that uncommon. The point is, there is some research. I was like, maybe there's a natural, because there is a natural protective effect. Yeah. Uh, and mm. I've read all of the studies, and there have been a lot of studies, including one, I believe, in Denmark that studied hundreds of thousands of people. However, of course, I have to say that it's inconclusive. Absolutely. Yeah. Not an expert. But Howard Stern can say the vaccine's a cure. Screw that guy. All right. Gerald A. is here. How are you, sir? I'm better than you. Yeah. <laughs> so far. The sinus infection is way care, worse though. than the Rona. I care. I'm, I've been coughing up flubber. You have? Yeah. Court of Black Garrett? I'm glad I don't have what you have. Yeah. So. Well, you got to watch out for that sickle cell. That's and true. Dave Landau, mm-hmm. how are you, sir? Ahoy. Ahoy, boy. <laughs> Ahoy, boy. <laughs> All right. This is a weird start. So we are going to talk about Ahoy. today. And I want to go because I want to give Dave some time here yeah. uh, in relation to Jim Brewer. We have some announcements regarding if you're if you've paid for Dave's live shows, it'll affect some of the ticket holders. Uh, sorry, but I hope you understand. But I yeah. want to talk today about uh, the FBI. Just so you know, we're going to get to that. Uh, why the FBI is not really your friend. And I think it's important to delineate between the guys with guns and the guys at desks pushing pencils. Right. There's a big difference. And that doesn't mean that guys can't do great work for the country pushing pencils. But that's when we're talking about unelected officials. Hey, you know. Millie, this is someone unelected and unaccountable. Someone unelected and unaccountable who is undermining your elected president, thus the commander-in-chief of the military. Then we look at the FBI. Most of the people who are heading this up, they are not elected. They are not accountable to anyone. The gymnastics sexual assault case, which went on for years, and is just the tip of the iceberg when you look at all of the fake stings. I don't mean mean, uh, false, uh, false flag operations. Right. What I mean is when you, a lot of the stings that you've heard about, the majority of them carrying them out, insurrections, were the FBI agents yeah. inside <coughs> these, these groups. Wait, wait. <coughs> but then billions of dollars in damages and dozens of deaths with nothing. Right. Self-avowed terrorist organizations yeah. who are committing acts of violence, nothing. And that's because it's a lot easier for the FBI to go and say, look what we got when, you've, when you stage a plot yourself yeah. than it is to go to your superior and say, we really failed to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, summer riots really got away from us. So, yeah. Well, who better better to be in charge of domestic terrorism than the government agency that invaded the wrong country twice? Yes. <laughs> I agree. And got us all addicted to heroin. And indeed they did. Well, I mean, there's a positive, right? Yes. No. Oh, and they bad. put that's crack bad. into the ghettos. Yeah. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. Don't Yay, forget FBI. that syphilis. <laughs> oh, grow up. So, uh, Jim Brewer is making the rounds. Jim Brewer, uh, well-respected comedian yeah. Friend yeah. for a long time, friend of Dave's, uh, and of course now is persona non grata. And remember, just like Norm, a year and a half ago, 
They did the same thing with Norma. What was the attack? Norm Macdonald still doing comedy? Ha 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 ha. And it was so transparent because, of course, Norm is one of the most respected comedians. We all know this. Yeah. We all know that Norm is fantastic. You may disagree. You may not like his humor, but like I've said, there's objectively funny, right. objectively unfunny, and then there's subjective in the middle. Objectively funny, your Richard Pryor's, your George Carlin's, your Norm Macdonald's, your Jim Brewer's, who Norm Macdonald yeah. respected immensely, by the way. Yeah. About maybe up until two years ago, you wouldn't find a comedian who didn't respect Jim Brewer. No. He was one of the pure stand-ups who really wasn't that interested in doing SNL, wasn't interested he would tell you in doing films. He yeah. did stand-up. He was the stand-up's stand-up. And funny. Well, he did, yeah, he did SNL after he did Uptown uh, Comedy Club, whatever that was, that short-lived sketch show. Yeah. But yeah, he's known as for being a stand-up. He's done one movie. Right. You know, that's it. How high, even though he hasn't touched drugs in decades, because this is why no, people well, hate him. He's a born-again cool. Christian yeah. now. Yes. Well, he's his wife was a born again Christian for a long time, and so is he. Yeah. He's relatively clean, but he's one of those guys who, before you go on, like when you go on before him, he's like, just don't be filthy, but I don't care. Like he's all about comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was but, always me too. I would say, like, look, just don't make it so blue that then it's right. tough for me to go out and yeah, you know, clean it up. <laughs> but yeah. I did Motor City Casino with him and Royal Oak Music Theater and a couple Detroit dates, and he's uh. He's phenomenal. He's one of the best storytellers out there. And yes, up in, and you start seeing these like terrible open mic comics or feature acts that are like, screw this guy. Oh, he, and they're just attacking him. It's like, if you got a phone call right now to open for him, <laughs> you would be yes. going 30 over to get to the theater. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, which brings us to, we'll react to a TikTok video of uh, in, uh, a Lyft driver, not Uber, oh. want to get it right so we don't get sued because we have to be held accountable here. So here's a video, actually. Now Jim Brewer's under hot water because he's canceled shows at venues where he found out people were going to be forced mm. to be vaccinated. He's been making the rounds. Uh, let's just show a quick clip from Tucker last night. My fans were really upset. They said, you know, I'm not comfortable with getting a COVID shot. And, and now they're saying I can't come see you perform unless I do that. And I looked into it, and I, that's the last thing you should be doing. He looks high, but he's is not. going, hey, right. you want to come, see, you wanna come see the, this whole thing. You know, like feeding the seal the fish. Hey, you want to yeah. wanna come see a concert? Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's a new narrative, and the new narrative is the unvaccinated are the beast. Kill the beast. And when, when our leader put that out there and pointed the finger, like, where are the demons? Yeah, and, uh, and that's a really good point. Yeah. Vilifying yeah. Uh, at least a quarter, depending on which numbers you use or believe, of the nation who don't want to be forcibly vaccinated. Not even, yeah. by the way, that quarter of people are not saying the vaccine doesn't work. Right. What they're saying is, well, you told us, and Howard Stern still says, it's a cure. Right. Now you're saying it prevents hospitalization. Now you're saying we may need a booster shot. And right. the, the one thing that is irrefutable is we, people can say, I still think it works right now, but I don't know the long-term effects, and that's a risk-reward. And what I think is most important here to keep sight of is, look, I think it was, uh, I don't remember who said this, but it might have been Norm MacDonald who said that a lot of comedians want to be rock stars. Uh, there's a lot of similarities when you look at what they're doing to Eric Clapton. Look, Think about how they used to have rock against Bush, right? Yeah. No effects, which is the easiest thing in the world to rock against <laughs> yeah. a Republican. And you have Rage Against the Machine wearing <laughs> the shirt of a socialist dictator who yeah. was not a revolutionary, Che Guevara. He hated black people, hated gay people, executed people without trial, and was found in Bolivia holding his rifle, cowering, which had never been fired, saying, I'm worth more to you alive than dead. Yeah, that's the rebel without a cause, except he has a cause. It's called being a pussy. Always so you, been the machine. You yeah. put him on your shirt. And now, though, they're furious with Eric Clapton. They're furious with any rock star or comedian who says, you know what? I don't want to do the bidding of the government and force you to get vaccinated. Look, this is not someone taking a stand, forcing you to do anything. Yeah. This is a comedian. And now you have rock stars who are simply fighting for your right to ooh, 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 what? choice. Remember that word? Mm, no. They're, they're going to say party. Rock that stars, yeah. including party. Eric Clapton, were always against the government. That's yeah. what they were they supposed to supposedly, always, yeah. But now it's transparent. Well, I've always argued, it's really they're against one party. And so people say, yeah. Republican, Democrat. No, 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 look, they set that up. So you only have one way to vote. And believe me, I am not, I do not want Republicans to take our votes for granted. But when you look at everyone, including the people who rage against the machine, who then campaign for the machine, yeah. is there anything more machine than a politician who's been in office for 50 years, who hasn't, hasn't <laughs> held private office, he's been suckling at the government teat, meaning your teat, for 50 years and can barely walk out to the podium without shitting his pants, without swamp monsters telling him what to say and where to go, and he admits it, they're telling me to say this, they're telling me to go there, and you are raging against the machine by supporting and campaigning for him while trying 
to squelch independent voices like Jim Brewer, who just wants to do comedy and shows. Yeah, well, and he also made a really good point that I think is getting overlooked. Some people are bringing it up, but he's like, hey, I had COVID already. Right. So yeah. I don't I don't need necessarily this was him saying this, right? So I'm not a medical doctor saying this. He's like I don't I just don't need to go get the shot. He's saying that no account is or no kind of credit is being given to people that have the antibodies. Right. So and that should that should be talked about. That should be studied to make sure like hey, maybe maybe that's better. That's what Dr. Fauci was saying. He's like, "Hey, it actually looks pretty good. I just, we'll see how long it lasts." And maybe that's but, why there's no incentive to create accurate antibody tests. Right. Well, but if you have True. the vaccine, why are you afraid of getting the illness if it works? Exactly. That's I don't the understand. There's no. Really... Re that's why the entire thing's an oxymoron. It's yeah. look. This is right now. It's not a pandemic of the unvaccinated. It's a pandemic of people who don't like that they've made decisions with incomplete information. People who got the vaccine early on, you got it because you were told. We've been through it in this show. You can hit all of the links in the description here at louderwithcredit.com. You were told that you don't need to worry about the virus once you're vaccinated. They changed the definition of what that protection was. So you were told, then you found out it was leaky, but they said, well, less chance of hospitalization. Now they're saying maybe a booster. And they're conflicted about that. Israel is saying maybe a booster. I think it was. WHO actually said uh, there's no. not necessarily any need for it yet. We'll see. CDC is the one that's saying, yeah, we think we should do a booster. And then I think the FDA is saying, we don't know. So yes, no, we don't know. But when you got that vaccine, let's say four months ago, you saw Fauci on TV saying you don't need to worry about it. That's why everyone got mad because people got vaccines and they were saying you're sending the wrong message to yeah. tell people to still wear masks. So they said, if you're vaccinated, you don't need masks. Well, now that changed. Mm -hmm. So this is really a pandemic of people trusting government blindly and then regretting decisions. Stick with your decision. Look, anyone who decided not to get vaccinated, they're sticking with their decision. You decided to get vaccinated and said, well, oh, screw you, unvaccinated. It'll kill off the conservative voting base. Good. Then let them die. Yeah. You can have what you want. So Just leave us alone. Going back to comedians now, Christopher Titus, who has been on the show, one of my early debates. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, comedian. Self. Yeah, he's a com I he's like Titus, but I. I I don't agree with. Uh, I don't like him, and I don't sentiment. find him funny. But I appreciate that. You, I'm being honest. I, <laughs> I think, no, I think his stand-up's funny, but yeah, he's kind of an asshole. <laughs> I don't really think his stand-up is funny at all. I think it used to be. Anyway, That's but that doesn't, it doesn't it. matter. Look, you can find him funny. My point here is, I'm going to go through a list of comedians now: Emmy-nominated, Emmy-winning people who write for ABC, NBC, CBS. Right? The rebels attacking a fellow comedian who's well, just we, saying, I don't think I have the right to force you to be vaccinated. Yeah, when we get to Colbert, right, I don't know if we want to throw comedian. Out. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> we're throwing it around. Christopher Titus says, I want you to come to my shows. I want you to be vaccinated. Don't come to my shows if you aren't. If science, facts, right. and evidence doesn't sway you, you are too... Sorry, if you have kids watching, I'm going to give you... A, this is not a trigger warning. It's that I don't want... Three, two... You are too fucking stupid to get my jokes. Enjoy Jim Brewer. Yeah, because... When I think Christopher Titus, I think highbrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, evidence, Christopher Titus? Do you mean like when you came on the show seven years ago and mm. you had no idea as to how many defensive uses of firearms had taken place and didn't know what a semi-automatic was? That's cute. Stay with the buzz cut. <laughs> it worked, top, it works top. for you. No. Well, that just pisses me <laughs> off, too, when somebody comes out and says that. It's like, why, why are you taking a shot at a guy for making a stand? Well, here's uh, Colbert writer well, Frank what... Lesser. Well, I would, I would say aptly named. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you suck. Oh. You're nothing. Oh. Oh, nothing. Good. He says, I'd tell Jim Brewer to stick to comedy, but people are suffering enough already. <laughs> oh, you Ooh. son of a gun. I wrote that for him. Did it not land? Emmy no, nominated. It landed perfect. Emmy nominated this man. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Comedian, I guess, Frank Conniff tweeted. Well, it's in fairness to be Emmy nominated for a late show. You don't they just aren't there just four slots? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. sort uh, of a it's like a twenty five percent chance. You know, it's pretty much a participation nomination. <laughs> as long as they keep uh, they keep uh, keep us out of the fold. This is there you go. Yeah. You can't be nominated even though you double their numbers. Dang it. Comedian Frank Conniff tweeted. That's the one time we'll talk about our numbers. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get the amount of COVID cases down to Jim Brewer's fan numbers, we can finally put the pandemic behind us. Well, then good. Let them. I don't even know what this is. This supposed to. Once we get the amount of COVID cases down to Jim Brewer's fan numbers, that's way too high. Yeah, it's pretty low. <laughs> if you're yeah. talking about the amount of people, like at Jim Brewer shows, you're talking about thousands of people at every single show. Mm. You want to get the caseload down to like tens of thousands per day? Huh. Ugh. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger love. <laughs> Then Letterman writer Ben Schwartz tweeted, America needs laughter now more than ever. So Jim Brewer refusing to perform is great news. And uh, Keith Olbermann got in it. How about this? You guys, well, I don't want to offer a challenge for Jim Brewer. Oh, okay. You guys pick a venue in the same town 
on the same night as Jim Brewer. Let's see who fills it up. Because this is the only argument they have, right? I, I see Chris for Titus at least attempting. It's the same joke over and over again. Yeah, it's, yeah. Because this is anytime somebody takes a stand, they want to just say you're irrelevant and that's it. Right. Because they don't know what else to say. They're all parrots of each other. Right. You're not popular. That's the argument, which, it's by like, the way. That's odd. He's on Tucker Carlson. Yeah. And he's playing theaters, but okay. But you know what? It's also, let's say he wasn't popular. Science isn't determined. Truth isn't determined by yeah. consensus. It's determined by what's right. That being said, you want to know who the bullies are? I don't think there's anything more bullyish than, hey, 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 look, 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 nobody likes you. They like us. It, and it's even sadder when it's a lie. You're like, hey, no one likes you. Everyone likes us. What, where did they all go? And it's just a ring around yeah. the other side going, fight, 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 <laughs> fight. Truth is determined <laughs> Trust by... Trust me, they're around, okay. Yeah, truth is determined by hindsight, not piling on somebody. I know. Mm. This is uh, this is just really sad to me. Well, it sounds a little desperate to me too. Like, oh, they're like, oh, he's trending. Let's let's jump in on that, and yeah, I'll I'll look wagon. like I'm a rebel. You know? I, I don't want to say that. This this is the kind of thing that needs to scare everybody, because this is someone. The, what is his crime? His crime is literally saying, hey, I'm just switching to venues that allow you to be vaccinated or not be vaccinated. Yeah. That's all. I just want to perform at venues that offer you a choice and don't force you to get jabbed by the government. And people who are supposed to be the defenders of freedom of speech and people who are supposed to be the last vanguard of truth are saying, no, no, you must for take part in forcing everyone to be vaccinated. Let's be clear about the arguments. Jim Brewer is saying, all I want is for you to have a choice. And hey, that's what you guys said you wanted. Choice, right? Let the unvaccinated die off. Continue with the decision that you made when you got the jab. The opponents here are saying, no, 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 no. Every single independent comedian must join the guild and force every American who wants to go out and enjoy comedy, restaurant, uh, any kind of music show right now. It happened with my parents. I think a Michael yeah. Buble mm -hmm. show. You have to take part in forcing everyone to be vaccinated. By the way, heartbeat bill is outrageous. And you guys, you guys comment here. Uh, this to me is the, the reason comedy is a weather stick. Yeah. And it's a club I've, I've not wanted to be a part of f for years because of this. It is amazing. To me. I don't think there are people who are more spineless right now in this country yeah. than comedians. And that's because of the gatekeepers. Like you said, there are four shows. You cannot get in there unless you either meet a diversity quota or have the right point of view. I would be stunned if you could find 2% conservative or Republicans working Conan in all Conan isn't on the air anymore. Right. It's all changed. The playing field's done. The idea that even if you want late night, what do you want to get out of it? Right. There's nothing there anymore. Well, and you have an announcement to, to make because you this kind of forced you to look into, because keep in mind, Jim Brewer didn't know, the reason this change happened is he didn't know the venue set these rules. Yeah. Mm. And that's kind of out of your control. And then that forced you, right, to do some digging. I don't want to speak I, for you. No, it's the same. It's fans had been reaching out and telling me that they couldn't attend my shows because they weren't comfortable with the vaccine. It was the exact same thing. Monsters. I don't I don't need to know your medical history for you to come to my show. I simply make sure I ask, I go, please don't have AIDS. Right. Uh, that's a good and, rule. Uh, yeah. Which because, is fine. Right. Especially if you're a gymnastics coach. Well, that's how it is. That's know? how it starts. The FBI... <laughs> Ignored a lot of tips, not just the ones on Larry Nasser's fingers. Right. But here we go. <laughs> so uh, you've canceled some shows. I'm ca I'm canceling a show right now. There are a few that I'm that are in like California that obviously mm -hmm. I would have known. Well, which about. show are you canceling? I'm canceling uh, the Stifle Theater in Salina, Kansas, uh, okay. on October 22nd. We're going to look for a new venue. They will give you a full refund. Don't worry about that. If you did buy tickets, I know a lot of people did. But I had received a lot of emails from your area of people just saying that they were not able to attend because of the health restrictions. And when my agent booked it, that that was not part of it. This right. was all of a sudden added. Yeah. I started getting all these emails. And personally, I just don't agree with it. Well, also, it's like, look, and, and I, I hope people out there, again, you can comment. I know some of you are getting the short end of the stick if you bought tickets, but... You'll get money so, back. So you're going to get your money back, but they don't get to see you, which is yeah. really what matters to them. I'm but the hoping issue to find a nearby venue. Right. But sorry. And hopefully we yeah. can't. No, but the, the thing is here, who do you want to be getting? Who? Look, someone is not going to get to see the show. The point is, Dave, now understanding the policy of these theaters, I think we want as many people to be able to enjoy it as possible, not yeah. limit it. So uh, I, hope, I hope people out there understand. And you do have a show, though, coming up still at Carnegie Music Hall in Homestead on October 1st. That's still happening. Yes, and then uh, Albany, New York. Albany, New York. Uh, not this weekend, but next. Okay. I'll be there. And yeah, I, this is just something where... I And I let me be very, very clear to anybody out there who's going to uh, attack me. I'm pro-vaccination. I grew up in a house with a nurse for a mom. 
I completely <laughs> think vaccinations are a wonderful thing. I believe in medicine. I don't think you should give tree sap to a kid who has meningitis. But I do think that this is not... We have not gotten the proper answers on what this is. And right. a lot of people are uncomfortable. And for private personal reasons, some people can't take the vaccine. That is none of my business. Right. And if you're vaccinated, I don't think you should be worried about getting it if it works. Right. So my own personal opinion is your medical history should not keep you from coming to the show unless there's not a wheelchair ramp, and then I would have one put in. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. you're, you're not nice. going to use your legs like a sucker? No. I'm not going to watch you drag it up the stairs with your mouth. Although that That'd would be, be a good opener. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's impressive. The MC. Have you seen it? Dude, I'd, I'd like to. Yeah. It's a funny bit. All right, so you guys can go and check out uh, the show date. So we wanted to give that the attention it deserved. And Jim yeah, Brewer, uh, hopefully we can get him on the show. Jim's, nice. a, Jim's great. a great guy, and that's really what bothers me. Is Anybody who's saying that he's jumping on a bandwagon, this is like you said, he's a born-again Christian. This was in his book years ago. He's the real deal. This is a genuine. He's jumping off yeah, the bandwagon. Exactly. He's this is a, he's a genuine person. This yeah. is not an act. No, mm. and he genuinely sells out theaters, and he is popular, so it's not a valid argument. It wouldn't be a valid argument anyway. It's an intellectual fallacy argument. Uh, I don't know, ad populum, ad pop, whatever it is, the Latin term. The point is arguing from a place of most of the people agree mm. with me is just one of the uh, intellectual fallacies as old as time, yeah. and it's the only attack that they have, and it just is ironic that people who no one likes are making that argument. Yeah, well. But you know what? They feel like they've got the cool kids backing them up. Hey, hope you like that, America. I hope you see the difference between the elites. The problem is, again, unelected elites. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a yeah. former Emmy writer for Stephen Colbert who hasn't even been funny in four years accidentally. <laughs> I know. He used to be so good on Comedy Central. I know. Yeah. But I do. I really do enjoy the home Zoom talk shows. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, those are great. Oh, they're I could a watch those all day. Love laughing. You at. really realize when it was pared down, boiled down there, uh, you know, to the bare essentials during the COVID. Yeah. How truly talentless. <laughs> well, no, it's like it's like turning the lights on at a nightclub that's always dark. And you're like, oh wow, this place yeah. looks all really the bells terrible. And are right. gone. <laughs> the lady you're I dancing can see with you now. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. 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 Like, this is a mess. This is a mess. <laughs> You're all a mess. I, I thought oh. this was great with the lights and the darkness. What kind of filters do you have on that everywhere. black light? Should have picked that up. <laughs> Nasser! Oh, I should have known ah, you were here, Nasser. You rascal. You wet scallion. All right, so before we move on, you're talking about the FBI uh, and Nicki Minaj. Nope. This is a, uh, a shoeless Lyft driver. Ah. Was enraged, what you're about to watch, furious at a request to... Uh, and this is also why I hate that Lyft and Uber rate passengers. That, to me, is Black Mirror-esque. Oh. Look, you <laughs> shouldn't be rating happen. passengers just because now passengers can't even discuss issues that might be... Like, if I'm in a, yeah. in a car with my wife, I go, Shh, don't talk politics. We might get one start. That's so bizarre. <laughs> it's like a Chinese social credit system. So That's awesome. Also, many of the drivers are uh, uh, probably a part of the Chinese uh, social credit system. Enraged that uh, they... Grammatically, hey, hey. but I don't know the product. They were asked to go the speed limit. Here you go. I'm just trying to ask you to go to speed limit as well. I'm saying I'm gonna go. Oh. <laughs> Is that a woman? Okay. Yes. We confirm. I believe. Okay. Yeah. You guys aren't trying to embarrass me. Right. That's a woman. Well, you got to theoretically. <laughs> hey, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to open that trunk. Aggr an aggressive I'm not woman. Not going anywhere until you open that trunk. Get out. Get out. Mentally ill. Get out. Do you have caution no. tape. Yeah, the caution so, tape means you should not get in the car. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> She pulls up. If, nope. If that wasn't the first tip off, the Dementor scream should have. Oh, see, see yeah, that deal. <laughs> oh wow. Thank you. Thank Get a hard case on there. It's okay. Oh. Me too. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Okay. Your parents' divorce was your well, fault. She speeds off. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I hope her dad just had a talk with her like, me and your mom are getting separated. And just so you know, this is all you. It's all you and your Christopher Titus haircut and your banshee <laughs> screaming. That's why we don't have sex anymore. That's why she's been so cold to my touch for so long. I will never see you again. I will never forgive you for our divorce. And you're, just so you know, I'm going to front load this for you. Your therapist is going to say, it's not your fault. Hey, 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 look at me. It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Crocs. So terrible. Suck. <laughs> she wasn't even wearing Crocs. She no, threw them away. She like, was uh, shoeless. She, the Crocs, she's like, the Crocs are too much. They're constraining me. 
I can't with my spider veins, my varicose veins. I gotta go shoeless the way God intended. <laughs> you know she's got a pair of Doc Martin steel toes. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna toss on her Birkenstocks and hit Nick DiPaolo backstage. Yeah. <laughs> this is what where was we... in shotgun though. By the way, was that like a blow up doll? So, yeah. I have what no was idea. that? Probably I, so she can. Use... I thought it was like a clown, like a blow up clown. It's so you can use the carpool lane. That must be what it is, it's right? It's right. What? That's what I think it is, too. No way. Look, yeah. there's a lot caution, of red flags. Don't get in that tape, car. Shoeless. The whole thing is a red flag. Yeah, yeah. the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if I walked in and there were an Arab man named Muhammad with a pressure cooker next to him, it wouldn't be more suspicious than that lady who was shoeless with caution tape and the Christopher Titer, uh, Titus haircut. And just to be clear, this is emblematic. The reason I want to show this of why we are where we are in our country. When people say we're divided because of Donald Trump, no, the reason we're divided is because we are saying the exact same thing and reacting to it differently. So right there, they both go, she goes, I got this all on camera. And he's like, yeah, so do I. So in other words, he's thinking, huh, thank God I've got this on camera that the lady making the Dementor screams and the Christopher yeah. Titus haircut with the caution tape who's shoeless refuses to go the speed limit. And she's like, thank God I got it on camera that those assholes want me to put on shoes and go the speed limit. <laughs> well, she's wearing a mask to keep herself safe, but she's not going to go the speed limit to keep herself <laughs> safe. Does that make any sense? Uh, it depends. She's probably the one who just like walks around with a diaphragm for safety. Oh, I'm sure. Everybody wants a piece of this. Got it all on camera. <laughs> I can't give it to everybody. <laughs> and when you shut off the lights, and you when you shut off the lights in the uh, nightclub. It's like Jessica Alba. Oh, yeah. No. It's no. hard to tell the difference. you got to get some drinks in you first. <laughs> a lot. Like, you have to be blind drunk. Yeah, yes. yeah. Like a fifth. Blackout drunk. <laughs> yeah. A handle. Even the people going hog hunting are like, oh. <laughs> I mean, I, wanna, I don't want to be a hog with rabies. No, they just they will go home and make some mac and cheese and yeah. touch themselves. Yes. Ow. What? Which hey. Less har hey, whatever harms people less. Oh, mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. Well, listen. That's I love mac and it's cheese. It's a craft meal. Yeah, that's when you're the drunk? best part of that story. <laughs> Stouffer's. When you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Which could really be an ad for anything that's aggressively mediocre. Yeah. That's true. Olive Garden. No. No. When you're dead. <laughs> when, when you're dead. <laughs> Never good. Yeah. Oh, you, endless salad and breadsticks? Wow. So I can get as much crap as I want? <laughs> What a deal. <laughs> that was, you know, Jesus hosted Last Supper at the Olive Garden, and that was his last miracle. Ah. And what would make you the never like... ending breadsticks? <gasps> <gasps> Christ. What a deal. This is delightful. Couldn't they have been better? And never ending <laughs> salad. All right, their salad's okay. And some <laughs> lasagna sticks, and you're like, what is that? He's like, I don't Sounds know. Gross. Like, I'm about to die. Let's uh, not uh, sweat the details here. <laughs> Yeah. It's missing the point, bros. Anakin's um, is closed. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know they went under. What? You want to no. go to Applebee's? Applebee's, no. Oh, well, you know what, Jesus? They do have two for 20. You're going to betray me three times before the two for 20 <laughs> hits the table, Peter. So um, this is a question I also have for you, too. You know, Nicki Minaj is in the news. Yeah. And I'll show you, this is why this matters. It's not just trending because Nicki Minaj, and I'm not a fan, uh, not but, and I'm not getting behind Nicki Minaj saying that Nicki Minaj is based, but Nicki Minaj just came out and said anything about the vaccination and said something that wasn't even complimentary but neutral about Tucker Carlson, and everyone in the media has jumped and attacked, mm -hmm. which to me is, I would say, bizarre but truly expected. So, Well, it's a bit odd when uh, just a couple days ago she was a black woman who was a singer that you all admired, and now that she has an opinion that isn't even an opinion, she's asking some questions. Right. Is now what makes it that you you hate her. And what's so funny is that the left goes, oh, oh, conservatives don't like, uh, oh, wait, is that Megan Thee Stallion WAP? Yeah, it's Megan uh, Thee Stallion. Well, yeah. seriously, why were, same, you, same why were you taking health advice from a woman that sings raps about <laughs> ass eating? <laughs> yes. <Yeah, laughs> right? no re I'm serious. And like 400 what? pounds. Right. There's but, no reason that you should have been like, well, why that's isn't Lizzo. she... <laughs> That's well, this is what's uh, funny. If it's, oh, I don't know. Is Nicki well, Minaj not big? Well, her, her oh, well, booty. she got a big booty. Her booty's big, yeah. Well, okay, so she had it installed. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. This is Nicki Minaj <laughs> booty 98. Rascal. But the point is, they will take health advice from someone who is overweight to say big and beautiful, hey, you can't judge them. However, if someone says, ooh, I don't know about the long-term effects of the vaccine, that all of a sudden discredits them. And all yeah. people who say we shouldn't have disclosure laws for HIV, for AIDS in California, that's the actual law. You can bang a stranger and not let them know that you have AIDS. It's actually criminal for them to ask you about it. You can be 400 pounds. You can have a BMI of blood type pudding. And I realize that I'm mixing up analogies here with BMI blood type, but understand blood type is on the brain because of the Rona that I'm going through or not going through. <laughs> not, but it's not rare. The point is, they then it's a bridge too far when they just say, I don't know about the, I don't know about the vaccine. I'm not sure. 
You ain't black. You didn't think this person was not a qualified medical professional when you couldn't fit them in a rowboat? Wasn't she the one talking about making sure, like, you know, to have something on your fingers after, like, when a guy... Was that Nikki? I kicked the... No, 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 no. That's um, that Cardi B. Cardi B. Ah. Cardi B. Cardi oh, there's B. another one. So we have... N no. Cardi, Cardi B, B Nicki Minaj, Megan Thee Stallion, Lizzo. Disgusting. Cardi B is have, the one that says terrible sexual things and yeah. interviewed the president. Yeah. That's right. That's also right. It's Cardi wop. B. Yeah. Also wop. Sorry. What wop. a stupid world. I know. <laughs> anyway. And it's right. funny, again, we're seeing the same thing where the left goes, conservatives, oh, you're mad about what? Again, if you have kids. Yeah, you know what? I don't want my kids listening to wet ass pussy. And then we go, oh, wait a second. You want to cancel somebody because they believe that they should make their own choice when it comes to vaccination? Again, we're, we're, we're saying the same things. We're just lying. How do you solve that? How do you solve the lift fight where people are going, yeah, you should go to the speed limit. She's going, I can't believe you're going to go to the speed limit. How do you solve that divide where you're saying, yeah, I think a heartbeat, Bill, you're stopping a heart that's not a heartbeat that's not your own. And they go, I can't believe you're going to stop us from stopping a heartbeat that's not your own. How do you solve the problem with the divide of going, I don't know. I don't think 400 pounds is healthy. I don't think wet-ass pussy is good for children. I don't think that the woman who's talking about cleaning her asshole with her fingernail should be interviewing the president. Like, oh my God, I can't believe that same person said that we don't have long-term effects on vaccinations. How do you solve the divide? It's not because of Trump. It really isn't. Well, and I don't care. I'm glad there's a line in the sand now. Well, because you don't have to agree with everything somebody does. Right. And just because you've pigeonholed somebody into a category and you believe they know everything they think doesn't mean you're right about it. Right. Or not think, which is why this exactly. Nicki Minaj story is very painful. Yes. <laughs> nobody, nobody wanted this. No. So yesterday, <laughs> Nicki Minaj went on a Twitter rampage. Uh, she, most notably, she tweeted out a clip of Tucker Carlson uh, defending her. And of course, leftist uh, streamers, I guess, and Twitterers, I don't know who, what qualifies what right now. This is why it's so hard where yeah. someone asked my wife what I do. And my wife's like, ah, I guess he hosts a podcast. Like, my husband, too. Okay. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> oh, Lord. A, you know what I mean? Worse. It's all the same. We should so, just start calling you a streamer. Yeah, just call me a streamer, I guess. That'll get me some... Just, do we do. Use, uh, just don't call me late night host. I just yeah. use Florentine's line if I'm getting a haircut, which is, what do you do? Oh, I, I cut lawns, and then all of a sudden they have no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so they came after her saying that she went on a white supremacist, white nationalist show, and all she said was, right, I can't speak to Nicki Minaj, talking about Tucker Carlson, agree with, even look at someone from a particular political party. People aren't human anymore. This is being a sarcastic and misspelled. If you're black and a Democrat tells you to shove marbles up your ass, you simply have to. If another party tells you to look out for that bus, stand there and get hit. You know how many U.S. presidents were white supremacists? Oh, please, just stay on topic. Y'all can't do that. The topic is asking questions is okay. But let's make the topic. Nikki wants to talk to white racists so that all you can sleep better tonight. Dummies. <laughs> Did good. no one else do the marbles? <laughs> I was wondering where she got that. Well, it's really hard to know now what's a prescription versus advice. Right. I know. I don't even know anymore. But I do know they are horse marbles. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Well, you're, you shouldn't use the marbles hey. that you're supposed to, you know, hit yeah. the other marbles they, they, with. Those were bocce balls. Oh. What? Also, you didn't have to reach back they into jarts? your hog collection. I've noticed all the slammers are missing. Yeah. yeah the, sl <laughs> the slammers. That's what they call it. The slammer. Yeah, the slammer. <laughs> Uh, and this this is the media. And just so you know, this isn't this is where you see this is not just trending on Twitter. The media and everyone, including late night mm -hmm. and actual news, have responded yeah. to attack Nick, the woman they were praising to attack Nicki Minaj. Just I think that these look, I don't I'm not a Nicki Minaj fan. And I think she'll no. probably come out and say something crazy not very long from now. But taking this on its own is very reasonable. She's yeah. just saying, look. I can't even agree with someone individually, and you're just going to accuse everyone of being a white supremacist, and you'll do anything Democrats tell you to do? She's not even saying that she's a Republican. I think it's very reasonable, and so I think that when we talk about how you determine what's true and what's not when we're all saying the same thing, I think a big part of what you have to do, a part of sort of your litmus test, has to be how vitriolic is the reaction? Yeah. Is it proportional to the original statement? Because look at how they're responding to what Nicki Minaj said. Well. Oh, sorry, let's go to the clip. Oh, oh sorry, I know it was a clip. And people like Nicki Minaj, I have to say this. You have a platform, sister, that is 22 million followers. Okay, I have 2 million followers. You have 22 Must million followers proud on of Twitter. Yourself. For you to use your platform Wait. to encourage our community <laughs> to not protect themselves and save their lives. My God, sister, you could do better than that. You got that platform. It's it's a blessing. How can health authorities even attempt to combat this kind of misinformation coming from somebody 
who is a huge and beloved international star like Nicki beloved? Minaj. Well, it got huge, right? It's very difficult. Uh, the, there is a lot of misinformation, uh, mostly on social media. And the only way we know to counter mis and disinformation is to provide a lot of correct information. She should be thinking twice about so why are you talking? propagating information <laughs> that really has no basis as except a, a one-off anecdote. Nicki Minaj caused controversy when Sexiest she tweeted, man in the My world, cousin in the Trinidad Guardian, won't Fauci. get the vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent. His testicles became swollen. Of course, your cousin's friend is a much more trusted source than all of the world's doctors. And I especially don't want Nicki Minaj doing her own research because I don't want to wait 10 years for her next album while she finishes up medical school. Now, here's the problem. The problem is for a lot of Nicki Minaj's followers, uh. millions of followers, that tweet about swollen balls, that'll be their research. It will Born be Born a crime, research. still a crime. Yeah. This is what's interesting. <laughs> um, look at the theme. The problem is social media. Yeah. The problem is that... The problem is that People can express independent thoughts, no matter yeah. how moderate they may be. So if that's the problem, that tells you what their solution is. And that's what's going to bring us to the FBI conversation a little later on. Fauci, Colbert, no, are saying, the pro Joy Reid, I only got two million followers. Well, that's two too many. <laughs> I was surprised she had that many, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Like, wow, well, really? You do? I mean, it's... She's kind yeah, of a lull cow, so it's like... They have money at MSNBC to buy stuff. Well, oh, two, two million's company, three's a Reich. So I just, <laughs> I just, I, I, you know, this is the, rea the what they want to do is make sure someone out there, big tech, are you listening? Are you listening? And by the way, in case you're wondering, YouTube right now, you watch this show, guess what? You're going to get a Seth Meyers clip auto playing despite having oh. never chosen one of his clips. <laughs> no. Ever. Say it's not so. Ever. That's what's going to happen. They want to go, ooh, Nicki Minaj. Turn, turn up the WAP. Turn down the, hey, maybe we should question authority. Turn yeah. up the... Dr. Fauci, sexiest man in the world, Ugh. turned down the, hey, you know what? Maybe it's not my role as a comedian to force you to get vaccinated. This is, this is where we are. We used to think that social media uh, actually allowed us to, to bypass gatekeepers, and now they have become the most powerful gatekeepers who have ever existed because they're worried about losing the stranglehold on information. You were about to say something before. Well, it's just that you have 74%-ish of the black community that's not vaccinated, which means that they have questions. And right. you have all these supposedly left-wing talk show hosts that have spent the last two years saying that they're completely for the black people. Mm -hmm. But the second that they have an opinion or even a question that goes against what their narrative might be, all of a sudden everybody turns on them. Right. And that's what I just find to be disgraceful. And with Colbert, it's like, do you think what Nicki Minaj asking a question is somehow more egregious than, I don't know, a dancing cartoon needle saying, let's all go to the doctors. Let's yeah. all go. Yeah. Like that, which is what he literally did. Yeah. It's like you're pushing something that you don't understand either. She doesn't understand it and wants answers. So you cut to Fauci, which, by the way, this is now perfectly acceptable to have two rich, white, old dudes yeah. trashing a totally black fine. woman. Totally right. fine in this in this situation. But again, Fauci, no answer for her question. Just, I think it's dangerous that she has people who might listen to her opinion. Why do you think that, uh, Dr. Fauci? Because it's dangerous when people listen to mine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, have you heard the things I said? Don't wear a mask. Wear a mask. Don't go outside. Go outside. It's aerosol. It's not aerosol. The vaccine means that it's secure. Actually, it's just protection. Then I change protection. I'm full of shit all the time, and you keep asking me. Have you even done your basic research on what I said about AIDS? It's a miracle that I... If you were to just have a monkey with a dartboard, he'd be more correct about AIDS. <laughs> it's anal sex and dirty needles. I don't know how it missed me. You don't have to think about it, dude. You about to say something, Joel? Sorry. <laughs> so, no. I, I'm a puppet, and I look like a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they make me? I said specifically, make me look like a not puppet. <laughs> they must have Every not time. heard the not part. <laughs> <laughs> well, look what Trevor Noah just did. He set up this dynamic that I think is it's really frightening because you don't know where it's going to stop. He basically said her followers are too stupid to do any additional research mm -hmm. based on the claim that she made of something that happened to somebody that she knew. Yeah. Right? She didn't say that this is like all of it. She didn't say this is the only reason. 
she basically just made a comment. He said, all of her followers are just going to go through that. So Trevor, what, what's the solution? His solution to that is, oh, you have to just trust us. Yeah. You have yeah. to trust all of the gatekeepers because you're too dumb to do the research. You're too stupid, black people, to go out and get a license. You, you can't possibly be made to do that. You're too stupid when you have an opinion against Republicans. You have to just be called an Uncle Tom or you have to be called a black, white supremacist. Weird, right? Or you're Nicki Minaj and your fans are too stupid to know the difference between something that's your opinion and something that's well, medical fact. Yeah, and two important points that I want to make here. Our criticisms, for example, where we've been accused of being racist against Black Lives Matter, the organization, yeah. against black organizations who take advantage of yeah. their black voting base. This right now is people just attacking Nicki Minaj saying, how dare you do this? You're not black enough. Also, right. she said, I knew some, and I think it's kind of stupid, I knew a friend from Trinidad and Tobago who got big ass balls. <laughs> I'm not taking that. <laughs> I guess that's, I'm balls. Saying, that's not that smart. Right. Maybe the guys from Barbados. We don't know. The point is... <laughs> Is that any more dangerous than Fauci saying breakthrough cases are very rare? Yeah. That was an He couldn't have had that info. Well, we know that's not true anymore. Well, we know it's not true. I'm not right. saying yeah. that they happen. I don't know. Well, yeah. You know what? I am saying it. Loudofcredit.com. All references. Mayo. The Moderna shot. Either the Moderna or Pfizer against the Delta variant. 50,000 people in a sample study. Divided by rage. Uh, by rage. Rage. Yeah. By rage. Uh, yeah. By, uh, <laughs> pretty pretty much. Yeah. Divided by race, age, gender. Pretty well controlled, Mayo, 42% effective. Okay? So Fauci saying there, there are no breakthrough cases to they're rare. Is mm -hmm. that not a more dangerous anecdote? Why aren't we saying, hey, Fauci's being irresponsible because that'll stop people from doing research as opposed to Nicki Minaj. My uncle's balls got big! <laughs> yeah, but she, she's not Ben Carson. She's not Larry Elder. And they're, what this is is they're actually upset because they thought they had somebody in their pocket and they didn't. Yeah. Exactly. Just like oh, Kanye. Yeah. It's just an anger thing. It's just an anger well, thing. Well, and play the tape to the end, guys. Like, put aside your political leanings. Play the tape to the end. Do you want to be like communist China? Do you want to be like no. Nazi Germany in the 1930s? Yes, they do. Started yes, censoring they do. everything? No, that they want to end up there. That's exactly where you end up. I wouldn't support a Republican who right now went out and said, do not, under any circumstances, get vaccinated. I would not support that because there are people who do just need it. to get vaccinated. You should have just stopped it. Do they want to be communist China? Because judging by the phone sex call logs between military in China. <laughs> That's true. It's weird when the transcript starts out with what are you wearing? Yeah. <laughs> he nicknamed the them same the China. Yeah. Do you have on your medals? 1-800-CHINA-36. <laughs> right, what are you off. wearing? Are you wearing a first place ribbon? <laughs> mm -hmm. Bring me Swalwell. <laughs> Swalwell. Uh, by the way, speaking of all this, you can follow us on those hell holes. Follow me, Louder, uh, on Instagram and on TikTok, trying to fight the, ch the communist Chinese <laughs> where they lie. And uh, hit the notification bell if you're watching here on YouTube. The best yeah. thing you can do, though, is just tune in live. It's a live show Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern. This week we've had some YouTube screwery, so we've it's had to start late. Weird. We yeah. apologize. Uh, we'll Comments. be taking your chat on uh, Mug Club later on. Yeah. Um, uh, talking about our first crushes, which is an interesting ah. conversation. All right, before we move on here to the FBI, I just had to hit this. Disney is celebrating hashtag, <laughs> gotta look down and read this. Hispa <laughs> it would be so much easier if I had a prompter like yeah. over there. Hispanic Latinx Heritage Month. <laughs> And they tweeted out, happy hashtag Hispanic Latinx Heritage Month. Never forget the value of family time and remembering where you come from. Hey, Disney, do you know how I know your Twitter manager's white? Basically. <laughs> Exhibit A. Remember, we went out and asked. They, <laughs> yeah. They find it offensive. There are polls it's that offensive. find people who are actually Latin, Latin American, find it offensive. They don't use this. It's only white feminist bitches. <laughs> The fact that the Mexican character looks like it's from Mad Magazine? Yes. <laughs> and in a strange move, actually, though, too, uh, uh, Disney actually uh, followed it up with this one, which was ill-received. Yeah. Maybe yeah. distasteful. Oh. If you're oh, listening on audio, you might want to go over to Mug Club or YouTube. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Thank you. You guys got it. The recent Gallup poll found only 4% of Latinos like the term Latinx. Wow. 4%. All from California. Yeah, yeah exactly. At yeah, what, surely. I guarantee you they're just part. Yeah. Latin. At what point do you say it's <laughs> yeah. social engineering? When only 4% of the people you're claiming to yeah. not try and offend yeah. actually agree with you. You're trying to force their hand. You're trying to force their hand into agreeing with you. You've managed to divide Mexicans from Mexicans. Yes. Well, only 4%. Are you guys that? What is that? that noise? Is that? Are you guys hearing that? What is that? Guys, what's going on in the control room? Seriously, though, what? Do you guys hear that? What was that? Oh, oh, oh. Gun Santa? In the suit. <laughs> 
But how'd you get in here, Gun Santa? We, we don't have a chimney. Oh, 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 Steven, Gun Santa doesn't need a chimney. Now, Steven, I heard you were a very good boy this year. Wow, it's the new Walther PDP. I don't have this one. <laughs> What's wrong, Steven? Well, this is great and all, Gun Santa. I just wish that all my friends could have perfect triggered and ergonomic class leading firearms, too. Oh, but Steven, they already do. Whoa! Whoa! I got a Walther PPS! I heard it's the best one. Walther PDP? It does exist. Whoa! I got a PPS too! Nice. We're gonna be so safe now. I got a Walther PPKS! And bullets! Thanks, Gun Santa! I've never held a gun before. Oh, 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 what's your name, little one? Carlito. Gracias por el Walter, señor Gun Santa. That's no problem, Carlos. Where are you from? Juarez. Juarez, Mexico. Okay, maybe next year, son. Open up, you racist scum! What's that? Steven, you have a show to do. Let Gun Santa handle this. This is a stand your ground state. And look, uh, now it has a red dot. That oh, is the power dude. of Christmas magic. Just so you know, people, is it unloaded? Yeah, it's unloaded. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm Santa. Really happy to have the sponsor. You know, Walther was a sponsor for a long time, and just yeah. to be clear, the yeah. reason they weren't they couldn't keep up with inventory. Well, that that yeah, that does hurt because so many pe you guys yeah. were supporting them, and they sold yeah. out uh, of firearms. But they're back now, and this is uh, their new firearm since they're back. This Walther PDP is That's nice. unbelievable. Look, I've always said this: it's like BMW, Mercedes. At a certain point, like oh, I'm not going to crap on other guns out there. There are plenty of good guns. I just recommend that you try the Walther. It is Google. Just run a search. Bing. Sorry. Find that little duck, bent duck, back go. paper clip. Don't do it. Your bonsai buddy, Purple Gorilla. Just search Walther PDP review. You will not find a negative review. The trigger is amazing. The ergonomics are incredible. And they have these serrations. Even if your hands are oily, like mine in the show, they're machined yeah. into the slide. Beautiful. So it is an incredible firearm, and we are really happy to have them here. Uh, you can go to, um, is it Walther Arms? Walther Arms com, or just go to your, go to your local gun uh, uh, retailer, yeah, yeah. firearm retailer, and just, just try the Walther. If you don't like it, don't buy it. Just try it. That's all. All right. I love it. Let's move on to the FBI here. Mm. So yeah. it's in the, the FBI's in the news. Having a rough week. <laughs> yeah, you could say. It's a little Having difficult. a rough go, the FBI. Yeah, what are you going to do? They probably, uh, <laughs> probably were the reason for a lot of parents' divorces. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Let's start with one of the reasons they're in the news. Okay. And then go through the difference between... The FBI and what they, well, the stories that you've heard as served up. Oh, right now they're talking about it on CNN. Well, that's nice, but they won't talk about the other stuff with the FBI. So yeah, let's show right. what they're showing you, and then the subtext you're missing. At this hour, we're following two developing stories. Oh, they just changed. Washington, oh, that's actually perfect. Wow. Fencing surrounds Preparing U.S. Capitol ahead of far right, right rally. rally. Here's the thing. I've been accused, along with Ben Shapiro, of being the gateway to white supremacy. Yeah. I don't know anybody who's going to this far right yeah mm, i don't pot. know anyone who's talked about it at all no. you guys come i, I want to hear from you come at, do you know anyone who's going to any of you plan on attending this is this is theater right just like yeah. men menstruating it's 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 period kabuki theater this go. is domestic violence kabuki theater guys where they i made it sandwiches yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a we got a yeti cooler we we're gonna take a road trip uh, sorry dave I have a tent that sleeps six. <laughs> <laughs> it's like from he went Congo, all out from Congo, where you throw it up and it goes. Pfft. Dave, there's 15 of us though. Oh, oh, I know. Yeah, that's by design. Oh, I know. Okay. In a oh, sleeping bag. It's pile four. on. So <laughs> this is what they go. Look, FBI. We know what's going on. The FBI failed with the United States gymnasts. We're going to trust yeah. the FBI and CIA though, telling us about this far right violence, right? Well, here's the thing. 
Uh, half those members are 75% of the people attending, maybe in the FBI. And I will explain to you why. Numbers, facts, statistics that we have all available at LottoScutter.com. So let's first start you off. You can't expect them to get this right when the money was reallocated to the fake kidnapping fund. This is true. <laughs> yeah. Which really is surprising that they labeled it that. Put it in a trust! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, members of the USA Gymnastics, they testified. This is what you've seen. Senate, uh, in, in the Senate, Larry Nassar's abuse, Michaela Maroney, I believe this was yesterday, had this to say, and it's still kind of ongoing. After telling my entire story of abuse to the FBI in the summer of 2015, not only did the FBI not report my abuse, but when they eventually documented my report 17 months later, they made entirely false claims about what I said. Why are public servants whose job is to protect getting away with this? This is not justice. Enough is enough. Today, I ask you all to hear my voice. I ask you, please do all that is in your power to ensure that these individuals are held responsible and accountable for ignoring my initial report, for lying about my initial report, and for covering up for a child molester. And this, mm. is the, mm. this is the problem with the FBI. This is the problem with the CDC. This is the problem with Millie. You know what's required for there to be accountability? Is that girl to stand up against the system? Is this show to stand up against the system? Do you know what's required to keep your elected officials accountable? The ballot box, assuming it's not moving, where you're trying to vote, it goes, <laughs> yeah. was this ballot box a droid? I can't, oh, Republican ticket. Oh, that's or absurd. some guy standing behind you has 80 million. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and a guy standing before you has a beret and a billy club. Mm. That's really just a, they're, they're blocking Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Who are you voting for, <laughs> Trump? And then they just point you at a trash can. You're like, I'm sure, is this where this goes? You yeah. Should, yeah, that's where it yeah, is. Yeah, we did a, put it in there. It's new. It's the model 4.2. Yeah. It looks like a recycle bin. I told him to, I told him to change that shit, but what you going to do? <laughs> so gonna Larry Nasser was a USA gymnastics doctor accused of abuse by... 156 women. Wow, wow. That's Bill Cosby uh, times Bill Cosby. <laughs> that's two Bill Cosby. Jeez. Oh. No, that's more. Yeah, that's Bill it's Bill Cosby, Cosby to the throne. Like, times so is it almost yeah. squared? It's squared? It's Bill Cosby squared. It's Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if Bill Cosby died and Satan really wanted to play a cruel trick on him, he would show him like a matrix of heaven and Bill would be like, oh, wow, I only had like 35. Now I got 150. Six gymnasts to abuse, and then they're like, ha, 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 you're about to get raped yourself. No, no, guys. I think we need to be clear. I discussed this the other day. Bill Cosby, innocent man. Yes, you this know? is absolutely true. <laughs> yeah, so, good points. 156 women. Let me rapid fire this so you guys yeah. get a full picture here. 2018, Nasser pled guilty to 10 counts of sexual abuse, and we can bring this back up there, Angela, so people can see it. Whittle um, it he began working at Michigan State University in 1997. Uh, the FBI failed to report Maroney's testimony for 17 months. Wow. At least 40 women and girls. And keep in mind, this is, this is gymnastics. 17 so talking months, about girls. that's the left's abortion plan. Yes. <laughs> that's what they do in Virginia. Get it? They'll just keep you in a waste paper. Waste, uh, they waste throw paper you business. out. So 40 women, <laughs> 40 women and girls were molested after. After wow. the FBI was made aware. Wow. So this is when they say, if you can save one life, and right now they're putting up, we're talking, right on CNN, look, bring this right up again. Bring it right up really quick. Volume, just, just ramp it right up there. Look, far right Washington rally, they're ready for all this. You had Melanie, uh, months, you had over a year, and 40 more women were raped, molested, assaulted. You did nothing. So now let's go into where the FBI does take credit when the media wants to praise them. Right now, right now, FBI, CIA, American intelligence, heroes. Ooh, 40 women who didn't need to be raped, even though we already knew about it. Eh, the rules are kind of murky. Okay, this is not a one-off. The Parkland shooter was reported to the FBI five months before the shooting. They, fa they failed to tip, uh, report the tip to the Miami Bureau. April 2021, FedEx shooter was interviewed by the FBI in 2020. The FBI interviewed the Boston bomber in 2011, two years before the bombing. They investigated the Orlando Pulse nightclub shooter for 10 months before determining that he wasn't a threat. Two of the 9-11 hijackers shared a hotel room with FBI informant or informants before the attack. So this matters here because they don't do their job. Does F stand for fail? It, I think it might. This is remarkable that this has been going on. With the you, nightclub you, shooting wasn't it? Wasn't he a, a military? Or no, it was the base shooting that they. Uh, you're talking about Fort Hood, yeah? No, nightclub yeah. was a was the gay nightclub yeah. pulse shooting. Yeah. Oh, I remember. So what they do is they say ruined my whole night. Yeah. That being said, at this same time, if I'm not mistaken, the guy who shot Bin Laden is still on a no fly list. So the point is, it's correct. They make plenty of rules up and they limit your freedoms. 
Stephen Hayes couldn't get, he was on a no-fly list. I had a family member who was on a no-fly list because yeah. he had the name of someone else who was on the no-fly list who also shouldn't have been on the no-fly list. <laughs> the shooters, however, the molesters get to go on unscathed, mm. raping 40 more women, and now we're supposed to trust them when they say, we need a, we need a fence up above the Capitol. Yeah, yeah if your name's John Smith, you're never traveling. No. <laughs> no that's definitely, it's any basic yeah. name. It's like... Oh. No, but I mean, the FBI didn't exactly have a clean record before this. And again, you've de- you've delineated between the leadership of the FBI and right. good agents doing good field work. They tried to get Martin Luther King pencils. to kill himself. They did. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, allegedly. 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 Uh, but then let's look at their victories, right? This is something... So remember BuzzFeed reported that uh, Whit- Whitmer, right? There was a, there was a kidnapping right. plot. That was a big thing. Well, look, there were 14 militia members charged. There were 12 FBI informants. That means that almost half, almost half of the people involved, until the FBI came in, it was a drinking buddy club. Mm. (laughs) At what point, there's a difference between, like when we went into Antifa, it was just me and one producer and a dozen Antifa members who handed him accidentally an ice pick a knife and said, hold on, let me go get my sawed off shotgun. And I remember calling Ben Shapiro. This wasn't, didn't expect this to happen in Utah. Utah, I mean, like, uh, they gave him an axe pick. Uh, uh, oh, my word. And then all of a sudden, the security just <laughs> oh my. forward. And they had no interest, by the way, a lot of the cops. There was one person at the FBI who cared. And I don't know what I'm allowed to talk about. It didn't really go as far mm. as we would have liked. So Mine's 12 so un- FBI un- informants versus 14 militia members charged. Let's look at the case filings. After militia member Adam Fox, uh, he questioned the value of harming Whitmer, right? So this is the non-FBI, like, "Mm, I don't really want to harm Whitmer. We want to do things like protest, you know, maybe scare her, cut her. Um, No, no, kidnap her. Yeah. That's what, come on, guys, right? The FBI informant Big Dan told him to shoot around through the cottage window. Who looked a lot like Dan Connor. Did he? Yeah. (laughs) I'm guessing. Effing place up north, send an effing round through the window. You know, this is, of course, that you hear in a call. Big Dan, FBI was the one. So when you look at the evidence, it's the FBI informants who are the ones suggesting violence. Or other people are like, I don't know, we just want to drink Stroh's. It's fire brood. All beer is fire brood. <laughs> Don't be fooled by the marketing. Big Dan encouraged Fox to coordinate with militia members in other states. Here's uh, yeah, all the sources available at autocutter.com. He said, engage in a synchronized attack on governors in multiple states by all shooting rounds into the homes of the respective governors at the same time. He suggested that the militia could detonate a binary explosive placed against Whitmer's cottage. This is all coming from the FBI. The 12 FBI members versus 14 militia members. Read up on the case. This is what yeah. happens. The news says... There were, these mili- there were these radical far-right militia members who were trying to shoot Whitmer. And then they don't cover, actually, later on, it was the FBI who was saying shoot Whitmer. The other guys were just like, uh, <laughs> yeah. that seems a little bit extreme. <laughs> well, and they're fighting tooth and nail right now so that the transcripts of all the phone calls won't get out because you can't legally coax somebody into committing a crime. Right. Right? That's and crossing the line. This is also important with the last Capitol, uh, you know, the investigation yeah. in, in uh, January 6th. Uh-huh. This is something people need to understand. Republicans... And certainly I want an investigation. We want the investigation to also include the FBI and the Capitol Police. Yeah. yeah. Not just people who trespass. Wrong to trespass. You don't hold people for months without, without due process for trespassing. We said an investigation if we investigate all of it. Because guess what? Too many times this has happened. As a matter of fact, the biggest Al-Qaeda plot in history is an example of this. And I'm going to get to it in a second. But this also happened with militia members in Virginia. Big Dan, look, he appears again. He told Ooh. Special Agent Chambers via text that he intended to reach out to his target. Mission is to kill the governor specifically. To which Big Dan replied, that's on the first call. <laughs> I.E. use drones or other means. And the prosecution argued that the defense changed the meaning of these texts. This is an argument writing... They did not let the exchange speak for themselves. They inserted a period after specifically entirely changing the meeting. The omitted context shows it was, in fact, a question uh, because it was immediately followed by an answer. Okay, these are the people who say that you shouldn't have the right to defend your home and property because of militia, because they ignore an apostrophe. Now grammar yeah. matters? Now syntax? <laughs> no, no, no. Saying we, just detonate, we should detonate it and the response being like, yeah, yeah, detonate that shit. See, it was a question <laughs> response. Yeah, but the response is the same as the question. That seems like just more of an agreement between two pieces of shit at the FBI. This is like if Whitey Bulger was the agent. Right. As opposed to the informant. 
Which, by the way, they did a great job with that if we're yeah. naming stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. we're naming stuff. Yeah. Well, there's some good you know, things. We're not saying it's all bad. No, Whitey Bulger was an informant who killed everyone. Yeah. And, and but, then, then escaped, and then they found him in Malibu and then murdered him in prison. Like not, I said, not, hey, it's not all bad. Someone killed him. Someone. In somebody, someone. Yeah. We have no idea and no evidence at all that anyone ever... Uh, ever. Just, let's just be general. There's no evidence that power corrupts. No. So... Um, they also claim that this couldn't be evidence of entrapment. Why? This was the argument from the FBI, right? Because they never charged anyone with violence. You may oh. not know that. Ah. The charge was kidnapping. It wasn't to attempt murder. It was kidnapping. Because even when the, when the cameras aren't rolling, the FBI has to admit, really, the only calls to shoot and lay pipe bombs were from our guys. The most we can get them with is kidnapping. Just like, oh, really, at the Capitol... Riot, the only person who shot was Capitol Police, who actually ducked out from his cover to shoot an unarmed lady with a clear line of view, seeing that she was unarmed. So we really can only hit them with trespassing. But you probably don't believe that because you haven't heard the follow-up. That's what the problem is. They go, oh, look, trying to shoot and blow up the governor. You don't hear the follow-up unless you watch shows like this. AOC, mm. they screamed they were going to rape her. She wasn't even in the building. Yeah. She might not have even been in the same region. So uh, they claimed it wasn't entrapment because the final plot, I quote, and the crime they are charged with was conspiracy to kidnap the governor. Kidnap, not murder. Let me move on to another one that a lot of people may not know. The Liberty City 7. This was a hoax. And it was an Al-Qaeda plot that the FBI claimed to have foiled uh, right in the years after 9-11. Right? Yeah. So they're claiming victory in a lot of these. The FBI goes on the news, just like Fauci, right? People who are unelected in positions of authority and go, look, we stopped an assassination attempt against Governor Whitmer. And no one says, were you the one attempting to assassinate Governor Whitmer? <laughs> <laughs> like, that would be my first ask, question yeah. in any of these. So the FBI informants, this was the biggest Al-Qaeda <laughs> victory of the FBI. Do you guys remember this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, But a lot of people don't know this. And this is one of those things where someone like Alex Jones has talked about it because it's yeah. buried in other conspiracies that maybe aren't – that can't be proven or that aren't proven. Look, you can – Take this to the bank. Go look at the resources available. Now, this is a matter of public record. You heard the initial story and thought, good on us. Yeah. And I was dumb enough to think, hey, you know what? We're sticking it to Al-Qaeda. Turns out we weren't as effective as we'd been led to believe. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think George Bush was a good man at that point. Not a big fan. So, uh, FBI informants, you what guys happened? heard of it as the Liberty City 7. Yeah. FBI informants, they uh, basically manipulated seven black men, which I'm only saying it because it's relevant to them, into pledging allegiance to Al-Qaeda. They, they coached them into committing crimes that they never intended to commit until the FBI showed up. Wow. And wow. when you look at the transcripts and you look at the pressure, like we just saw with Whitmer, like, how about bullets through the window? I don't want to do that. How about pipe bomb near the cottage? I don't really want to do that. How about you fire shots into the air near the cottage? I don't really want to. I don't really, I'm not really a gun guy. I'm more of a drink beer rowboat guy and show up with a <laughs> protest. Maybe I won't wear a mask, at least not a double mask. Can I just get you for murder? <laughs> <laughs> so it was suggested that this was the largest Al-Qaeda plot ever busted by the FBI. This is yeah. what you were told. Um, it, was a total, it, was, it was a total hoax. You just need to look in. I, I don't want to say total hoax. They had people who were impressionable. Yeah, and this yeah. can happen where you have someone who's, let's say you have someone who's ready to protest. Okay? Let's say, for example, you have someone in January 6th. The vast majority of people, hundreds of thousands, are there to protest because they believe that there have, at some point, in American history, been some, you know, uh, let's just say this. They believed the big lie that was pushed by Elizabeth Warren, by Hillary Clinton, by Jimmy yeah. Carter, by Amy Klobuchar, right? They believed that big lie that election integrity was a problem. They believed the big lie by the Democrats. So, so let's just say 2018 the big lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 2016. Well, it, and 18. Yeah. Basically, always until 2020. Well, yeah. The big right. lie yeah, from Democrats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they believed the big lie from all the Democrats, Bernie Sanders, too. They believed the big lie from the Democrats. And that's why they showed up on uh, at January 6th. And then you have a few people who are influenced and they go, oh, yeah, no, you're just here to protest. We're just here to protest. Here's a fire extinguisher. Hey, maybe I'll throw out a smoke bomb. The point is you take people who are impressionable and then you feed them false information. And then they blame Donald Trump for division. So uh, they were focusing on the Capitol rioters. They have entire pages, by the way, just to give you an idea, dedicated to them yeah. on the website. Uh, their charges, YouTube videos of them, requests for information. And we can uh, all rest easy at night, though, knowing that the FBI, these are their victories, by the way. That's why I want you to know, because I'm going to list their <laughs> failures. Uh, they sent 15 agents to investigate the noose 
in Bubba Wallace's oh, garage. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, the garage door close the rope. Tie, Fifteen yeah. of them, huh? Fifteen of them. Yeah. They sent in, I know he was a U.S. Marshal, so they sent in Tommy Lee Jones. I want you to check every garage, house, outhouse, hen house, dog house, penthouse, everything. It turns out it's just a garage door closer. Well, I only got 15 agents on the way, so maybe you should shoot the governor. I was wondering why it was so small. I just thought black people were tinier. I just thought they were tinier. <laughs> They're real small. Which didn't make sense, considering I watched basketball. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know. Just tiny little news. My college roommate was Al Gore. Fast fact, it's true. I don't yeah. care. Tommy Lee Jones was roommates with Al Gore. Yes, he was. Oh, wow. Now, here's something else. So they had 15 agents to Bubba Watkins' noose. No investigation into, and this is something we broadcast live. Remember Chaz Chop? A yeah. lawless yeah. city in America? Yeah. And the FBI did nothing, but let's also get more specific because they love to zero in on targets, right? Yeah. Okay, Raz Simone, the guy who was captured on video handing AR-15s to underage people committing gross violations of the law on camera and committing threats of violence, as far as we know, certainly the FBI is not clear. No investigation there, but don't believe your lying eyes. Breaking news in the so-called Capitol Hill organized protest zone. There's been yet another shooting early this morning. Top security shot at those people in the Jeep after they ran um, into the barricades here. So there's another group they're meeting with there That's and then they'll Raz. be moving in a few minutes. So That's be ready. So Raz. Raz of Chaz. That's a 15 year old. Wow. What a cool kid. Summer of love. <laughs> He's handing guns out from the trunk of his car. Shots ring out, and this is the video of it. Once again, in the Capitol Hill protest zone in Seattle, the two people hit teenagers, and one of them is dead tonight. Yeah, there was a 525 percent yep. increase in crime with Chaz. Just wow. to be clear, he had a government grant for rapping, and that's where he got the money. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, something else, too. You know what else happened? We broadcast. And people may not know this. You can go uh, and watch. We broadcast live for yeah. people now who are. We know we have yeah. a lot of new fans from Chaz. It was Chop, then Chaz. Yeah. Uh, Chaz, then Chop. Yeah, then we, we got very serious about that. Right. And very we rented serious. out Raz Simone's yeah. Airbnb. <laughs> it's as thing. we did. Black Lives Matter <laughs> warlords do. <laughs> and we declared it new Chaz. <laughs> and broadcast from there live. Which was hysterical, and yeah. Chaz was really mad oh, about it, it because we're not the FBI. We can't arrest them, so we figure we can piss them off a little bit yeah. by just mad. putting the fear of God into uh, them with the, the reality that they may not get their cleaning deposit back. <laughs> That's all we can do. That's all we do. <laughs> but we do. I'm a goof. So the John Brown Gun Club exists there, and they yeah. chased, just so you guys know, this is when the, the night turned. Court of Black Guard, you were there. They yeah. chased you out. With guns. There were guys following us in Chaz, and they were supposedly heading to the uh, the apartment where Brendan No, was. not supposedly. That's what they said. Well, that's right. that's what they yeah. said. I don't, yeah. We don't need to say allegedly. They said they were heading there. They were we, on the way. We, unlike the FBI, we were able to intercept their direct correspondence, not only on Twitter, but I won't give you all of, uh, all of the wow. details and the tools that we have at our disposal. Yeah. Yeah. But this is an official group, the John Brown Gun Club, who commits acts of violence and plan them, stage them on a regular basis. The FBI, as far as I know, hasn't claimed victory. They're right there! They're right there. You don't need to send someone in and say, hey, maybe you guys should get guns to shoot the governor. They're a gun club, and they plan on shooting people. So this is the John Brown Gun Club attempting to violently attack our producers who are doing a goof. Wow. So, Quarter Black Garrett, where are you now? Looks Shh. like Bel Air. Shh. You running I'm trying to reposition. Oh, oh. <laughs> something's going on. Hey, change your They're change. on our tail, man. I'm honestly the speechless at the moment. Um, there's somebody yelling. Okay, all right. Let's uh, let's let him go for a little bit. Yeah. Let him get to safety. Yeah, let's see, Brendan. What is going on in New Chaz? Uh, we are uh, we're leaving New Chaz. Uh, some new developments are in place that are saying that uh, Raz doesn't really want us in his apartment. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Why does he not want? Can you call Raz for us? Can you get him on the phone? Um, I might be able to call him if you if you check back with me. In a couple minutes. Okay, you know, let's, call. let's call him from the car. <laughs> we'll check back. That is the face of death. <laughs> that was me keeping up appearances. I was no, very was, scared. We were very worried. We're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You might notice when you go back and watch that show, there are some very long shots of just me at the desk because my half-Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond and Gerald, are going, like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. We're trying to figure out what's going on. Is everyone are alive? they okay? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, we made it. Nothing from the FBI. Keep in mind, too, when they talk about the Capitol riots, and right now they're talking about, talking about what's going on. It's okay. We don't need to bring it up. People no. see. Talking about another riot that may happen, insurrection, right? Talking about a few people who trespassed. Uh, okay. What about, again, we're all saying the same thing in different reactions. What about the fact that Americans, hundreds of millions of Americans, watch their cities burn? At least $2 billion yeah. in property damages yeah. because they haven't updated the number. I'm willing to bet it's probably $4 billion. At least 1,000 officer casualties. Dozens of people dead. This happened during the summer of love across the country. How many investigations? How many charges? Comparatively, I know there have been some, but did they infiltrate all of these groups? Yeah. They didn't really need to, because you don't need to go into the Black Lives Matter riots or Antifa and be like, let's shoot people. Like, oh, two steps ahead of you. <laughs> We've already done that. You weren't up with us a block ago, were you, right? No, but they, you're talking about people that have been arrested for them, and they tried to debunk this. Yeah, it's because they burned down buildings. They went and arrested people of committing, for committing those crimes. What they didn't do is arrest tons of other people who were responsible for damage and, and, and organizing protests. And murder. That, well, and, and people being pulled out of their cars, people you know trying to beat them up. Like, you didn't go get everybody. They did beat them up. They did. No, I know. Pulled them out of cars and no, you yeah. said, tried to beat them up. Well, in some beat cases, they tried. Some people actually got away and actually got in their car and drove off. In some cases, some people use their Second yeah. Amendment right to defend themselves, yes. and they were the ones who got charged. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You didn't exactly have to infiltrate that. No. Network. It was you, there. You just had to go just downtown. Them. <laughs> just go downtown and look for the pallet of bricks. Follow the pallet brick road. This is all you need to do. <laughs> yeah. And this is, look, I want to, uh, um, this is something I think that a lot of you know this to be true, but sometimes people don't necessarily know how to articulate it, and you don't want to come across like, you're denigrating people, all of our service members. Okay, first thing, there's a huge delineation between unelected officials who have been given these huge uh, or certainly influential positions of power, power over huge swaths of your life, over private citizens' life, right? These people at desks, these are pencil pushers. There's a big difference between them and agents in the field. Let's be really clear. Yeah. Now, the reason, though, the FBI does this, think about this for a second, right? They state the biggest al-Qaeda uh, a, a plot that was foiled. Well, that was a hoax. Yeah. When you look at the Governor Whitmer, that was how how long did that run on the news? We did a rally all the time to protest the nursing home deaths. Just yeah. a freedom from information request. Thousands of people had a professional head counter. The only story was a couple hundred people show up in a protest. Why? Because it was entirely peaceful. But they spent it was a, it was like a morphine drip on a loop in the news. So it's a lot easier yeah. for you when you're the FBI to stage events and say, look how successful we are. It's a lot easier to go to your superiors, right, and say, look what we created and we stopped because you're bringing them, look, it's like a dog bringing them a bird. Look what we did as opposed to all of, the, all of these other missed opportunities where someone would have to go to their superior and take accountability for failure. So the FBI wants to say, look, we stopped an, we stopped an assassination. No, 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 you. Half of the group was you, and you were the only ones talking about assassination. Look, we stopped Al-Qaeda. No, 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 no. You were effectively acting like Al-Qaeda. It's a lot easier to do that for the FBI to go, th th than to go and say, look, okay. <laughs> Guy raped, sexually assaulted 158 women gymnasts, uh, did come to us. We thought they were drama queens. And... I uh, didn't do anything for 17 months. How many more women were raped? 40. Over 40, at least, to mm -hmm. the best of our knowledge. Oh, well. Our bad. But hey, that's right? not 50. Yeah. Right? 40 is the oh, new 50. so terrible. What? Isn't that? That's what we say here in the FBI. Well, we do say that, John Smith. By the way, you we can't say fly. hindsight's 2020. Yes. Also, hindsight is the FBI's purview. Oh, my Ooh. gosh. So, and then you also have, is it e easier for them to say, look, we stopped, uh, we stopped Al-Qaeda than it is for someone in the FBI to go to a superior and say, okay, $2 billion in damages and uh, over 1,000 officer casualties across the country, dozens of deaths, that really got away from us. This is just, yeah. it's not that difficult. And I think that people need to understand as conservatives, when you look at these problems, understand human nature. People are selfish. And when you have these giant bureaucratic wings of government, they're designed around a socialist utopia that everyone is inherently good, right? It doesn't take into account that people who are individuals want to go to their boss and say, I did a good job. And it's a lot easier to say that if you've staged something than it is to actually do your job and monitor what is happening across the country because that's random. That's difficult. I know this because we've intercepted these communications accidentally. And there were people at the FBI saying, how'd you do that? 
How did you end up with a knife in yeah. your hand from Antifa? How'd you end up uh, finding the sawed off shotguns in their trunk that they were planning for Ben Shapiro? I'm like, I don't know. Shouldn't you guys be telling me? It's <laughs> yeah. human nature for individuals to want to take credit for wins and to try and avoid taking responsibility for losses. That's why the stories you hear about are generally, I don't want to say fake, but they're pre-orchestrated and they're, it's, it's just, it's quintessential, right, distraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and we need transparency for these organizations to be able to trust the work that they're doing. And right now the FBI is fighting it. In this case, you're talking about with Whitmore, Fox basically said his legal defense was, I've been coaxed into doing this. And they said, look, we don't like your defense. We don't think it's plausible. And so therefore we're not going to give you all of the information. He said, look, I understand that it's important to maintain secrecy for the people who infiltrated this group so that they can do their job later. Fine. I just want access to the communications. What did they talk about behind their backs? Like, what did they say that they wanted him to do? And they're like, no, we're not going to give you that information when it's 12 to 14 fbi to yeah. actual group <laughs> i thought this was like how one. is that an infiltration <laughs> how's this not dangerous yeah, like oh there's like, like 12 of you showing up together it's just like the fbi taping guitar lesson posters to posts for militiamen <laughs> it's, ah, pull off the number yeah i'll go to that and show like you want to shoot the governor uh, i wanted to learn how to play uh, i just want to learn how to play some clapton <laughs> Now, come on. So bad. What else you want to do? <laughs> want to Are do you anything sure? else? Are you sure? How about uh, you want to do a little bit of you want to do a little bit of raping and pillaging maybe? That's not really my thing. I just like drinking beer and hating the governor. We oh. We got pipe bombs right over here. Pipe bombs. Right, right your hand. Uh, I ain't touched that since college. For me after <laughs> one pipe bomb, I am done. Let's grab that guitar. I'll teach you B minor. And let's not talk about that guy who was in A minor. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. So you guys, look, hopefully that helps set this straight for you. And this gives you at least what I want to do is give you a compass going forward. Because you go forward again. Again, I, I really, really, I want to smash that like button. That obviously matters. Yeah. You, but I want as many. This is a sample size. We're pretty fortunate here on this show to be able to have a big sample size with you guys in the Thank comment you. section. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you... Um, know about are planning on attending this what they're saying far i don't know anyone yeah and by the way i knew everyone <laughs> at a tea, at a tea party i knew i knew somebody i knew at least one person at any tea yeah, party event go. uh i knew people when you were talking about you know uh, rallies for donald trump i didn't i didn't know anyone who went to the january 6th event. i knew, I knew mm. of one person who went but he, i mean there yeah. were so many people he's just there supporting the president he didn't right. do anything no of course there were a lot yeah. of people who were the upset majority of them i don't know anyone here though I don't know anyone going. And this is a sample study. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be out of touch. I well, have no they idea. did call him all sorts of names for having the wall built around the White House as well. Right. Mm -hmm. When Trump was mm -hmm. in office. Yeah, they were saying he was a coward. Yeah. And but he was hiding. Yeah. And they were also uh, sh shooting and trying to kick down the gate. Correct. Yeah. So mm. I don't know. It's like of oh, a government building. That almost almost proves the reason for a gate. Oh. I mean, yeah. It's like, wait a minute. Oh, that's wait, why wait, it's wait. there. Walls work, you say? Shut up. Okay. Shut up, right. said the Vatican. <laughs> Look at my gold shoes. Don't I've got a gold <laughs> sidewalk. <laughs> we don't want anybody. No, 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 no. You don't. You don't understand. We're against walls unless they're painted of solid gold. Yes, <laughs> it's just a quality thing. Yeah, and we have <laughs> lots of money. Yeah, <laughs> lots of it. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so before we go, uh, this is something that I do want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, Steven Spielberg. Now look, Spielberg. I am a huge. I know. West Side Story fan. Flame. I know when people I'm get a Spielberg. Spielberg. Just fan. <laughs> Spielberg. Uh, yeah, he hasn't really had a great film since Catch Me If You Can. But Munich? Was that after Catch Me If You Can? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Whoa, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And since Munich. Fair. Fair. I don't think Bridge of Spies was very good. Tin Tin. Take yeah. it or leave it. Like Just kidding. Tintin. Leave it. I like Tin Tin. Uh, I like his hair. But yeah. <laughs> it goes woof. It is comical. So. <laughs> oh, speaking of hair. Wait, did he do Ready Player One? Speaking of hair, what's going on on good. CNN? Oh, it's yeah, nice. no, let's criticize Mitch McConnell. Let's, can we bring on Cruella? <laughs> <laughs> Late stage. Be Indeed. sure to bring your puppy coat. That'll really yes. stick it to Mitch. <laughs> Which, by the way, I watched last night, Cruella. Has anyone seen it? I fell asleep. No. I knew it. It was... It was, I, it was the, no. Is it just me? Most unnecessary prequel ever? Yeah. She yeah. tried... Like, 
We need to humanize the woman who tried to kill yeah. puppies to make it. I can't it sympathize. Poke? I cannot sympathize no, with the lady. It, yeah, it was very hard to, to <laughs> sympathize with Emma Stone. In that no movie. Short of that movie just being Cruella decapitated in a ditch where someone traveled back in a DeLorean right. to save yeah. the puppies for the coat. I'm not interested. And I fell asleep because it was so boring that uh, I didn't see the redemption arc. So it was just a spoiled oh. bitch who wanted to kill puppies. Well, there you know really the same There's not a redemption lady arc. falls cool. off the cliff. Yeah. It's not in there for no reason. Right. <laughs> so it's like, whenever a movie yeah. starts like that, I'm like, well, there's the ending. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened. It was very well stylized, I will say. It was. She's a good actress, too. She uh, is a good Emma actress. Stone. But yeah, I... It was it was strange because I my uh, son and niece wanted to watch it. It's PG thirteen. I'm like, all right, and we and I'm like, this is it's a bit much. For, yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is a bit much. You know. Also, I don't really know that your son is into a film about haute couture, which if he is, you have some other problems. No, he was bored to tears. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, my <laughs> son comes in. I made creme brulee. <laughs> what you should just do next time, just to be sure, is have Cruella and a pair of tits right next. Yeah. To whoa, <laughs> yeah. whoa. Like, well, well, that's Hooper. Disney. Yeah. And he's like, uh, dinner. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hungry. Stouffer's yeah. yes. for when Cruella's on. Yeah, um, not a fan. No, not a fan. And that's what worries me about West Side Story, because West yeah. Side Story, I will say, is one of, and I know people, best musical, I think, ever made. <clears throat> Bernstein, the, the, the composition is very complicated. Uh, try singing tonight. When you look at the way they do this with the half notes, it's very, very difficult. Very well orchestrated. Now, that being said, I hope they solve the problem that from the original West Side Story, a little bit of a believability problem. Yeah. Tony was obviously <laughs> more interested in banging Riff than he was uh, Maria. <laughs> gay. Yes. I think we all know. A little oh, bit. Yeah. A little bit. If you didn't watch the original West Side Story, it, it, just just in case the actual people out there who don't give credit where credit's due to the gay community, watch the little gay dancers do muscle-ups like it's nothing wow. on pipes. Talented. They just like swing up. They're like, ah, officer Krepke. Like, I would be winded for a month. <laughs> well, Never recover. Me no. of that Norm MacDonald SNL bit where it's uh, the two gangs just start dancing at each other, and he's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's like, I thought we were going to fight. It's like, why? He's like, I don't know. It's just, we felt it. He's like, what do you mean you felt it? You all were doing the exact same yeah. moves. <laughs> what I find so funny, too, about West Side Story is uh, when they're describing the weapons, like at the gang fight, they go, yeah, knives. Okay, knives, change, zip guns. Wait, a rubber band gun? <laughs> You just said knives and chains, and I know some with surgical tubing. That stings. It doesn't kill you. Dennis the Menace walks away all sad. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, oh, I had a slingshot oh. for you. Yeah. Wilson's like, should have been. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. Shut up, Wilson. <laughs> you missed the boat. So uh, anyway, this is. Uh, I haven't watched this in its entirety. Yeah. But uh, West Side Story, they're remaking, and I'm just hoping that it is not an unnecessary remake, and they yeah. don't do the auto-tune thing like they've done with all the other, I know, Disney movies, Beauty and the Beast. I didn't know you were such oh. a musical buff. Like, this is crazy. I'm not a musical learning, buff. I love, well, I love West Side one, Story. Right, yeah. So, like, you're talking about half notes you and all this other stuff. You didn't like the remake of Gatsby, where... <laughs> It, it had a... <laughs> Not so great. Yeah, where he was in a speakeasy listening to Rihanna. No, yeah. I didn't... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You didn't like that? No, you didn't find it realistic when everybody was dancing in like 1920s like Model T's on right. a bridge? Right, right, <laughs> right. Right to the, uh, the soundtrack it. of Lord and Joel Edgerton. Just like, I hit a bitch with my car! It's the worst movie. <laughs> the whole movie, I'm just sitting there with my friend like... Why? <laughs> but why? Why this? Why this? I hope it's not that. Well, I hope it's not, I hope that, this is not that. That's a good point. But you don't like West Side Story, the original, so much. I don't hate it. I like the idea of it. I mean, if I'm going to go to a play, probably going to see Book of Mormon for the fifth, fourth That time. one's pretty damn good. The good yeah. thing about West Side Story, though, is I think it actually, and I hope they don't try and politicize this again to divide us, it was, right. hey, look, you have Puerto Ricans, uh, and then, which is kind of funny because it's like there's half American, and it's like you have Puerto Ricans and you have really what probably would be Italians, Irish, basically mm. just not Puerto Rican. And it's really tough to tell by the actors because yeah. they really just took Irish Americans and slapped a coat of paint on them in a lot of <laughs> <Yeah>. these. <laughs> so <Little> Tanner. <laughs> but the point is it was love, even when it's a clearly gay man and a woman who is thrown off a boat later on by Christopher Walken or Wagner, that love conquers all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that that's a little, deep, that's that a little generational. Well, Look up Natalie Wood, Christopher Walken, and Wagner. And that is a re that's why Christopher Walken is weird. Don't know what happened. I thought we had Don't ask a Zodiac. Me. Although Robert Wagner is the only straight man that can pull off a turtleneck. That's true. It's a fact. What's going on there, Angela? You, you look like you're waving something. Oh, no? No, I was she was messing with her jacket. Oh, okay. She's I thought it was cold. Women. Huh. 
Uh, Always cold. Ladies. Always Got cold. Tiny bones. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the osteoporosis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's just Sally Field <laughs> in a wig. Him. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's watch this. We'll yeah, watch okay. the reaction right. to the West Side Story trailer. I'm a fan, and let's see what this looks like. All right. Let's go. Is this animated? I was going to say, it looks like they changed the face. The world is full like they matched Natalie Wood and then put Shepard Smith's face. Yeah. This is my first time in New York City. I want to be happy here. I want to make a life at home. Are you ready? Tonight is about family. Oh, it's the gay guy from Pitch Perfect. But I repeat myself. Boy it's a fair casting. You. Yes, you do. <laughs> what a redundant. You know what would be an announcement? It's the before. straight guy from Pitch Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> is that okay? I like that actor. Do you He's a good actor. World War III? Baby Driver? It's the heterosexual song oh, and dance no, I man. I like that actor, too. He was in that uh, new show, uh, whatever the game. That I don't summer like. game. I don't know. Netflix. I haven't seen it. Keep away from him. As long as you're in my house. I'm a grown-up now, Bernardo. I'm gonna think for myself. Tony, we need you if we're going to war. That's a little over the top there. The if, yeah. We need you if you're going to work. You? If you eat anything in New York when you eat a plate of pasta, you have to be in a wife beater. Yes. <laughs> And plumbing at the same time. Yes, will yeah. Ever forgive you. you also have expensive jewelry. <laughs> please just tell me James, Cor James Corden doesn't show up as a fat oh, cat. Please, oh, please, God. Well, unless it's the ending. <laughs> Life matters even more than love. See, I'm not a film snob. This looks good. It does look good. Doesn't float. No. <laughs> uh, Listen, that wasn't in the instruction manual. It wasn't. Uh, so she got hit with the sail. When is that coming to theaters? Do December. we know? December. It's a December. It's coming in December. Uh, okay. So look, yeah. what, what your thoughts? Uh, I think you know. As far as musicals go, I would go and check that one out. <laughs> I have to say, as far as musicals goes, because you know, I don't want to seem oh, like. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. The, but it, it looks. What's, what's, oh, oh, what's, what's going on? Wait, whoa. <laughs> How do you find a scoot, white man? I don't know. If I play a little trigger. Song? What's it? Oh my gosh! Uh, I, th is... I, I think so. I don't. I think it's How many trigger. bullets are left in this gun? I don't know. It's your gun, uh, choice sauce. Is there enough? Is there enough bullets to shoot you? Well, I don't know. Why is or he you, so upset? I don't or know. Are you what, cracker? What? Ah. Are you? Are you honky? Are you? Hey, you whoa, honkstress? What are you talking about? Honky? Well, honkstress is a thing. The, the slurs. A honkstress is real. You, Peckerwoods, kill my brother because all you have is hate in your hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Austin has a brother. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, had a brother. Oh, well, that explains why he's upset. Yeah. We're going to go talk about our crushes here uh, on Mog Club because we can't talk about that. That's sexist on YouTube and hopefully console Austin. I had no idea he was this so mad. So yeah, sad, shocking, yeah. man. But well, we know he didn't have a sister. I'd hit it. Uh, YouTube, thank you. We'll see you all next week. Piss off. <laughs>